So, uh, welcome. Craig McKenzie, I'm the principal. This is my fourth full year as principal this year and my ninth in the district. Um, I was the assistant principal prior, and the last three years we have been uh, living the dream. Uh, I love my team, uh, Jerry Goff, our director, Andrea. Um, we work hard and we play hard. And um, before I kind of talk about our vision, I'll just give you a couple of pieces of advice that if you don't walk into your building every single day, excited to do your job so that your faculty is going to feel uh, exactly as you do. So you have to model making work play. You have to model that you're excited to engage kids. You have to model that you're invested in everything that happens in your school extracurricularly and in the classrooms and in the hallways. Um, and my other piece of advice, and this is a mantra that I live by daily, is there are no uncomfortable conversations that are just necessary conversations, whether it's with parents or students or faculty members or your colleagues, and I advise you very strongly to attack weird space. Okay? So if you are doing an evaluation on a teacher and you give them a two and they've never had a two in their life and they're not making eye contact with you in the hallway for a couple of weeks, you don't let that couple of weeks go by. You say, hey, let's talk about this. And you get it to a place where at least you're not carrying the weight of the weird space anymore because that's how you survive as an administrator. My wife had this magazine the other day that talks about like all of the dirty work that we do administratively is almost being like a dust storm that hits you every single day. And at the end of the day, you have the choice of wearing that dust storm and then it kind of gets kind of embedded in your skin and it's kind of hard to rub out. Or you do something, meditation, yoga, you get on your bike and ride, you go to the preschool in your school if you've got one spend five minutes with little kids. All those things are like a shower that kind of comes in and you can start fresh every day. So you have to, even if you're faking it, you have to project positivity and enthusiasm. So that's the message to you. Um, we are, uh, this is a grant, you know, obviously some of you are probably in on the XQ grant as well. We want that half a million dollars, but um, we've been, We've been working on this for about two and a half years. We were a Lighthouse finalist as well and didn't get that one. That's their problem if they didn't give us that money. Um, but the grant, in my mind, is a great way to solidify your vision uh, for your school. And so we take advantage of every opportunity to submit who it is that we are and we refine that every single way. So we started a couple of years ago with the concept of building a ladder to learner autonomy. Um, and Andrea's really good with visuals. I'm kind of the idea guy, you know? And our concept is that if you do all the right things in your freshman and sophomore year, then we want to turn your junior and senior year into a kind of a community college model where we create all kinds of uh, externship opportunities. Uh, and we piloted this, uh, we piloted this a little bit last spring very successfully in the second semester with some of our kids who are ready to drop out. So I know it's going to work with our high achieving students as well. But we don't assume that students know how to study, that they don't have study skills. They, we don't assume that they understand how to collaborate or work in small groups. Um, all of this stuff that happens in these first two years, if students do all the right things, if they earn all the credits that they need to, uh, if they're on, on task and, and on point with their portfolio progress at Benchmark, then I want to give them a little more freedom. That could be if you've got three AP classes on your green days, uh, that you don't come in until 9 o'clock in the morning because I know you've got a heavy load. I have no problem with that. The state might, we'll find out. <laughs> the state's been messaging, think outside the box, Greg. And so we're going, yeah, we'll think outside the box. You have to affirm it. Seat time does not matter to students who are high achievers. When you're in college, remember, if you had a big test uh, at 10 o'clock and you had a 9 o'clock class, you didn't go to that 9 o'clock class. And you did that strategically so that you could take the best advantage of it. So um, really it's more saying to students things like, we want you to take advantage of the time that you have in our school to earn credits doing things that have value for you in the long term. So going out and job shadowing, a bunch of different job shadows and finding out really where you want to concentrate your energies before you start paying two to three hundred thousand dollars for your college education if you have to do that. Um, if, they, if they've done everything that they can do credit wise, then they've got ten opportunities in their junior and senior year to earn the 14 credits that they need to graduate. I don't need them to be here every single hour today. I want them to do something connected to learning, but students who show that they understand what it means to be a self-directed, autonomous learner should have some freedom and responsibility come with that as well. And I think it was either Johnson and Wales or um, 
Roger Williams is piloting a high school right now that essentially does the same thing. They probably stole this from us. But there, they have the value of being able to say, we'll give you an associate's degree at the end of your high school experience. We're working on that concept right now. So, um, the values, applied and authentic learning experiences, learner autonomy incentives, personalized class pathways, individualized and flexible schedules, credit for learning outside of our world. Those are things that we want to give to our students um, one way or the other. We know that we have to train them in order to get that there. But if they are self-aware, they know when to uh, access and how to access supports, and they're doing all the right things, we want to from that. Interestingly, our intervention for students who are struggling to learn with our community are almost identical. And last year, we piloted two kids, one in culinary and one in welding. After semester one, they're like, Mr. Mack, I'm dropping out. All I want to do is weld. All I want to do is cook. And I'm like, all you need is three and a half credits. You can get this unbelievable charitable high school diploma that's got a ton of value as well. Of course you want that. I'm not doing it. I'm not coming here anymore. So I said, all right, on Green Days, get yourself a job. And both of them already had jobs. Go work during that day. I'll give you internship credits for the whole day, which is probably a little more than we should give. But they're working full time, getting paid, and earning credits at the same time. They didn't even need the credits to graduate. They needed their English, their PE class, and one of them needed a history, one of them needed a science class. And so they took those classes on their white days, they got their diplomas, everything's good to go. I'm not letting kids drop out because they want to go to work. If I can give them credit for going to work and set up a schedule that allows them to just plow through and meet those core requirements, even if you're not really invested in it, I'm telling you, you want that diploma. And that's something that we're piloting early on this year as well. So in some cases, kids do need structure and accountability in order to be successful in our school. For those who don't, we want to give them a little bit.